Hello everybody, this is Howard the Teaser King coming to you with college football week one review. Just want to talk about things that happen and what we're looking for and what we've gained from week one. Uh, personally I went 13 and 3. Um, uh, 5 and 3 in the teasers. I played 16 teams, won 13, lost 3, which is one of the problems of the teaser you lose a game and now you you win the other teaser so you go two for two in one teaser one and one in the other and you break even this is why I don't like to play it all for the same amount um, if you do that it's a little bit you know you, you gotta go four and oh you can't go three and one so that's why I vary it um, my locks I was three and one on my locks and then what I tend to do I didn't post it here, but like I had a lock of Tennessee and Nebraska. Tennessee, uh, I didn't watch the game, but that was just embarrassing. App State's a good team in their conference, but not uh, going to Tennessee. Tennessee needs to win because if they lost that game, they're done. I mean, yeah, they can win the SEC, but how the hell are they going to win the SEC if you lose to App State? So I, it showed me that they have a very weak offense. Uh, App State's got a good defense, no question, and they got a good running game. Uh, I knew that, but again, that's in the um, that's in the Sun Belt, not in the SEC. Tennessee can't handle App State. How are they going to handle anybody? Florida, Georgia, Alabama, any of these good teams. Um, so anyway, but then when you lose that first part of the teaser, the Tennessee part, I still like Nebraska, and here's why I would have played it with either Ohio State or Alabama. I had Ohio State over, which was easy, and Alabama under, which we sneaked in with. Um, I played it earlier at 54 under 60. It's a W. Uh, the line went to 51, 52, so it's a 57 or 58. 58 is a push, 57 is a loss. So you got to be careful on these over unders. What I notice is they tend to really jump like from yesterday to today, today's Tuesday till tomorrow. So you really want to get them in the right time if you feel it's going against you. Uh, like maybe a Baylor, you know that spread's going to keep going up. You know you're going to bet them, so you get them in early. Um, and I noticed a big jump from Sunday when the line first comes out to Monday to Tuesday. Uh, there can be, I think, Ohio State this week already has jumped I think they're first they're playing Tulsa be an explosive game a lot of scoring and they started at like 66 then they went to 72 already so you're already laying a teaser in them um, but that should be a very explosive game and that should go over but you don't want to get it at at 76 77 you know 72 and you tease it to 66 it's a, it gives you a better odds on winning it. Um, but anyway, so that's these are things I learned. So this is what you want to watch when you got uh, when you lose the first half of the teaser, especially a lock, especially on Thursday, and then the second half of Saturday. Then go ahead and play the lock with another lock. And I don't want to keep putting plays in because that really isn't the point of this. It's to give you the lock. It's to give you the game to play. Um, you know, I had Houston over Oklahoma. Well, that's a win right there. That's one of the 13. Uh, no, you didn't need the teaser, but you did need it in the UCLA game. And so I played Houston with UCLA. UCLA getting 10 or 11. They lose by 7. So that was a winner with the Houston and 18 or whatever. And they usually beat Oklahoma, or as I call them, Choklahoma. So those are the things you, you do when you bet teasers. You could have played all four locks in a four-team teaser and got really good odds. And I do that a lot because I don't just lock. I mean, Tennessee losing or winning by seven in overtime uh, is just shocking to me. Nebraska, that's exactly what I thought. Ohio State and Alabama, I thought, scored a little bit more than I thought but still came in under. So basically three out of – three and one on the locks. Um and all the other games, I just murdered. I had Michigan dead on. I had I picked the score in the Boise game, uh, and the only other surprise was Arizona. 
So what do I take out of all this? Well, the Arizona-BYU game, I take out that BYU's got a hell of a defense and not that good of an offense. So I now look at teams, are they over teams or under teams? So now I've moved BYU to an under team, going very strong defense. Their offense will get better, but at this point they play a very strong defense. So here I got Utah playing BYU this week, and the over-under on this game is uh, 40, I think 46 and a half, somewhere right around there. And before I would have had, well, BYU is an over team, Utah is an under team, hard to play. Now I got two under teams, and I got a 46 that I can go under 52 on, and I love it. That's like the LSU Wisconsin game that. I went under on last week. So basically, it turns it into an under team versus a Utah who's an under team, and it should be a very low scoring game, and you got a 46 down to 52 on it. So that's what I'm saying. So you learn if they can hold, you know, if they can hold Arizona at Arizona, they'll hold Utah. Um, so other teams that I learn with. Uh, Indy, uh, I was surprised their offense really, they had a couple of pick sixes. Their defense looks good, but their offense, the new quarterback just isn't that good yet. He might be, but again, when you lose the quarterback, I don't like to bet them too often, and especially overs or that until I get the team down. Is it the system or is it the quarterback? So in this case, this quarterback's not that strong, but they have a better defense. Uh, I thought Ball State's win was, was very good. Um, I like them better. Uh, the Army beating Temple is huge because Temple's got a good defense. Kind of shocked there, but as one thing I noted, when you don't play an Army or a Navy, that option team, you end up, you can't practice it. So Temple got burned. So I know Temple should have a good defense. I'm kind of letting them play another week, but I am keeping that in the back of my mind. More though, I'm keeping Army being a very good team. They can beat Temple uh they should be good so you start watching them but you can't take too much out of the first week you want to see the first two or three weeks and you go okay like florida state the quarterback okay he's another winston he looks better than winston so now florida state who i had as an under team now comes out their quarterback mcguire is injured this kid comes out plays terrible then he gets it going so now you go oh florida state looks like they did a couple years ago uh, now they're a dom. Now they're a bet on team. They're an over team. Uh, so you look at it like that. Mississippi is an over team. Great quarterback. Great offense. No defense. Um, so by watching the game, you learn. LSU still an under team. Wisconsin looks like they might have a quarterback. Uh, South Alabama. They they beat Mississippi State. I believe they beat Mississippi State. Uh, yeah, 21-20. So what does that tell you? That's a pretty good team. It's a good dog. When you get them, they're not. They scored 21 on a Mississippi State team. It shows me they'll have a good offense when they play these weaker teams. That's why you need to know are they have strong defenses or weak defenses. And that's what you're looking for. So I say South Alabama probably has a pretty good defense, 21 to 20. And they score 21 on Mississippi State. It's very good. Texas State uh, put up a 56, but it was a lot of overtimes. But still, they scored a lot more, and they weren't really expected to, or they were changing to like a no-huddle, fast pace. So it looks like it did very well, because Ohio's a very good team in the MAC. So now it gives me Texas State as an over team, as a good dog. They went on the road and did it. Southern Miss looks like a very good team, winning at Kentucky. Uh, you got to love that. Southern Miss, very good offense. To score 44 in Kentucky means that, that they're an over team. So that's what you're looking for. Louisiana Tech played Arkansas tough, 21-20, but you look at that as um, Arkansas is replacing their quarterbacks and running backs. They're probably more of a like a Wisconsin running the ball type of team so far. So I can't really get a good read other than uh, Arkansas is not that good. Now Louisiana Tech, probably a pretty good defensive team. Uh, Toledo played Arkansas State. Toledo... I like that, you know, they won easily. Kareem Hunt, remember him. Um, Arkansas State's got a new quarterback. It tells me he's not ready yet. So he could jump in, but he's not ready yet. Um, Florida beating Mass. 
Florida, great defensive team. No, I, to score 24 points on Mass is a joke. So Florida's just a great under bat. Uh, Clemson, Auburn. Uh, we know Clemson's got an offense, but Auburn just, you know, it's hard to get a good read on Auburn. They need a quarterback. Without the quarterback, they're an under team. Uh, UCLA showed a lot of grit coming back. Uh, A&M, who knows? Um, you know, they're good teams, basically. Um, Tulsa puts up 45 on San Jose State. Tells me Tulsa's got a good offense, which I know. But it tells me San Jose State doesn't, because Tulsa doesn't have a great defense. And for San Jose State to only put up 10 points tells me they're in trouble. So you want to bet against this team with, when they play good teams. Um, and right now, I mean, they're, they're, you know, you just don't score on Tulsa. That's ridiculous. Uh, I talked about Tennessee and App State. Washington looks like they're it. Uh, it's going to be hard to bet against them, and they're going to be really dominant. Rutgers is terrible, we know. Um, Oklahoma, Houston, we, we talked about that. Oklahoma, way overrated. Houston, probably a top five team. Just think of them as Ohio State. You can't go wrong. In a few weeks, Oklahoma plays Ohio State. The first line I saw on this was Oklahoma laying 12. I'm praying that Oklahoma's favored in the game now. Although, I, I doubt it'll probably go down from 12 to a field goal. But I, Ohio State wins that game fairly easily. The way, as long as Barrett's playing, Ohio State will beat Oklahoma uh, easily. Um, Nebraska, Fresno State, just as I thought. Alabama beating SC, so dominant. Um, you know, SC had a new coach, a new quarterback. They weren't going to beat Alabama. I could have played Alabama, but I, I took the under in the game and, and got the win there. I knew USC wasn't going to score. I just didn't think Alabama would, would score that much. Uh, Boise over UL Lafayette. If you go to my video, I hit the score, 45 to 10. I couldn't believe it. Um, Boise's back, very explosive. UL Lafayette's nothing team. It's exactly what I look for when I make a pick. Is you get a nice explosive offense going against a weak defense with a weak offense. So Lafayette's not going to score a lot of points and keep up with them. That's how I determined playing the team versus the over-under. Boise, I knew was going to score a lot. I knew Lafayette wasn't. So I can't risk the over-under in the game, which was 63. And it actually is an under game, but you don't like playing Boise under. But more, more importantly, Lafayette has no offense, so therefore it's exactly what I thought would happen is Boise would score 30, 40 points. And Lafayette wasn't going to score very many because they don't have an offense. And uh, so you bet Boise there. Um, Notre Dame, Texas, uh, that's exactly what I thought. Notre Dame had a good offense and a weak defense. Texas with the running quarterback, still not sold on them, but, you know, I like the game. It was revenge, but I don't know where Texas stands except for they have a weak defense again. So I look at Texas maybe as an as a explosive offense. We'll see when they play the big boys, but against Baylor and TCU and Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. All those games should be a mile over now. Um, I won't talk every game, but just the surprises. Ohio State, they're going to be explosive. They're pissed off. They missed the playoffs. Look for them to run the table until they get to Michigan. Uh, Western Michigan, very good team. Goes into Northwestern. Did what Stanford couldn't do last year, which was score and win. Keep your eye on Western Michigan. I'll be betting them hard and heavy once they hit the MAC. Uh, and just they're an explosive team. So 22 on Northwestern with a good defense is a really good thing. But I already know Western Michigan's the, the top team in the MAC there. Uh, Iowa 45, Miami of Ohio 21. Just shows me that Miami of Ohio isn't as bad as I thought. Um, I had Miami of Ohio as a as no offense and an average defense. Now I I had them with a good defense and no offense. Now I've changed it to an average offense because they scored 21 on Iowa. Uh, I don't know if they were garbage touchdowns. I didn't watch the game, but I'm basically looking at them scoring 21 on Iowa going, yeah, hey, maybe their offense is better than I thought. But I did have Iowa, and there I needed the teaser. It was 27 down to 21, and they win by 24. I got a late touchdown from Iowa. 
Michigan, exactly what I thought. Hawaii had went to Japan slash Australia. I read somewhere they were in Japan, so that's why I said it. But, yeah, but I knew they were traveling a long way and going to Michigan. That was, like, uh, the easiest game I'll have all year. And I looked for Michigan to do have a dominant defense. Uh, Jordan didn't even play in the game, the All-American corner. So look for him uh, this week. Um, Stanford, Kansas State, typical Kansas State, good defense. Kind of a weak offense. Stanford, you know, just about what I expected. Uh, Colorado, Colorado State. I thought Colorado State would score more. Um, Colorado putting up 44 is impressive for them. Uh, Ball State, Georgia State. Uh, Ball State put up 31 on them. So you you just keep it in conference. But Ball State looks like they can score a little bit more. Um, Minnesota, Oregon State. Oregon State scored a little bit more than I thought they would have. Vandy, South Carolina, exactly the under game that I thought. Western Kentucky Rice, Western Kentucky, the new quarterback, threw for 500 yards, just as I thought. Played the game over, got a W. Um, I think Western Kentucky is very solid, very strong again. Why in the hell they're playing Alabama? Alabama's 28 points over Western Kentucky this way. I have no idea what to do. I really hate to bet against Western Kentucky. I can get 34 points. They're not the normal doormat playing Alabama laying 28. This is a very explosive offense. And they went into LSU and put up 20 or 21 last year. They lost like 48-21. Um, so their defense isn't there, but their offense can score on anybody. They'll put up at least 20 on Alabama. Alabama, first of all, is going to be let down after being USC. But if they're not careful, Western Kentucky uh, can definitely score on them. And we know Alabama has trouble with running quarterbacks. And I don't think Western Kentucky is a running quarterback. But if anybody can solve Alabama's defense, Western Kentucky's going to throw the ball all over the field on them, which can't be good for Alabama because Alabama wants to run, have that run defense. So I just look for Western Kentucky to be competitive in the game. Uh, it's a lot of points, 28, and you get 30, you know, 34 in a teaser. Uh, I'm not crazy about it, but I would take Western Kentucky before I took Alabama in that game. Uh, Wake Forest, Tulane, two good under teams. Uh, Louisville, Charlotte. Charlotte's probably the worst team besides uh, UMass. And then Florida International, did Florida International. Uh, pretty weak team. Um, teams that lost, uh, there was a Virginia loss to like North Virginia or something, some Division II team, and they go to Oregon, so just keeping an eye on that. Um, so what I look for, teams off of a loss now. So you have Oklahoma, USC, Auburn, Colorado State, Mississippi State, and UCLA. They're all favored off of a loss. They can't afford to lose a second game. Um, but you wonder how good they are. I mean, uh, I know teams normally play better after a loss. It's just common because they're mad. And they focus. So, like, I think Oklahoma lays 46. I think they, they beat that. SC could beat the 16. I'm not sure if Auburn can beat 19 because they, uh, they just don't have a quarterback. Colorado State's a pretty explosive team. Mississippi State, I don't know how bad their quarterback is. And then UCLA has to play. I don't know how good UNLV, how explosive they are. They scored 50 points against a Division II team. So I honestly don't know. UCLA should handle them, and they should have a big game off of this loss. I think Rosen really goes wild here. But that's what you look for, teams that are off of a loss. And really what I'm trying to gather now is look at the box scores and who's – do I need to adjust? Is a, is a team an over that I thought was an under? And I had a few adjustments to that. Um – San Jose State, I think, might be more of an under team than an over team. Got to be careful. North Texas, I don't know what to do with them. I, all of a sudden, they scored against SMU. I still think they're an under team. They're just a weak team. They're a very bad team. Uh, TCU, I don't know what to do with them because I thought they had a great defense, and they let up 
20 or 30 points to a Division II team. Uh, and I'm thinking if this other Division II team got 20 or 30 on them, you know, I don't know what to – I don't think their defense is as strong as I thought because they have a lot of guys returning from injury. I thought TCU would be a very strong defensive team. So I'm looking at at them as definitely an over, but let's see how good their quarterback is. They got a big game with Arkansas this week. They're laying seven. I could cut it to one. I think if they had that defense, I would definitely have bet them, but now I'm not sure of their defense. Now it becomes how good is their new quarterback and everything. So that's why it's hard the first few weeks, and that's why I get better later in the year. If this game's played in five weeks and I've seen TCU – and I've seen Arkansas with better competition, I could bet the game much easier. But right now, I don't know how good our TCU's quarterback is or Arkansas's quarterback, for that matter. So, therefore, I want to bet the quarterback, but it's really hard to in this situation, and I can't. So you end up uh, trying to either watch the game or maybe you go over or under on the game, but until you know, it's very difficult. The confidence level, all my bets are based on confidence level, the confidence level is just is, it's too risky. I don't know what to do with this team. Uh, on the other hand, Texas. Now, I've moved Texas from an under to an over. I don't think they have a defense. Notre Dame lit them up. But on the other hand, now I think Texas has an offense. So strong offense, weak defense, that's an over team all day. And in that league, Oklahoma, Baylor, Oak State, TCU, Texas Tech, West Virginia, all those games are going to be over. Um, so that'll be very interesting. Um, Louisville, I, I don't know if they're an over or an under. It's going 70, but it's Charlotte. Charlotte's like a high school team, so uh, I think they have a strong defense. This week they play Syracuse, who's going to the Baylor offense. Ran at Bowling Green last year, scoring 40 a game. They didn't, they didn't score a lot as much as they should have last week playing a Division II team. I think they scored like 30 points, and I'm like, that offense should score 70 against that team. So I'm not sure Syracuse is there yet, that they're used to the system yet. Probably five or six games in, you'll see Syracuse start scoring a lot with the Baylor offense, and that's the thing. So here, I don't know that Louisville is that explosive. It should be an over. you got to watch the number, but uh, again, until Syracuse grows up, and learns the system, it's hard to, you know, are they going to score the 40, I think. But Louisville's defense could hold them in check pretty good. It could be an under game, so it's a very tricky game. What later in the year would probably be an easy over game. Uh, again, Virginia lost. Uh, they got to go to Oregon. I don't know if they're an over or an under. Um, Florida State, I moved from an under to an over. Great defense, no quarterback. All of a sudden, they found a quarterback. Um, look out. Them and Clemson are headed for a war. But I think Florida State looks like they're, you know, Old Miss isn't a great defensive team, but still, you couldn't stop uh, Florida State. Um, Cincinnati had a weak game, so I don't know how over they are. But again, it's week one. You got to, everybody's nervous. You got to look at that. Uh, Ohio, I moved from an under to an over. Um, I think they have a good offense and an average defense. So I initially had them as an under team, but I think they got a worse defense than I thought to let Texas State put up 56 on them. Uh, granted, it was overtimes, but still it was a lot of points they gave up to a Texas State team. So I look at that. Uh, Buffalo's terrible. They lost to some Division Two team. Um, you know, Kent looked perfect. They, they're good defense, no offense against Penn State, and it was a beautiful under. Northern Illinois uh, played Wyoming to a 24-all tie, and then they went to overtime. I hate the overtime. It skews everything. And you got to be careful that the game went to overtime and isn't a straight game because what happens is, you have the overtime, you have the, you know, you see the final and it's 38-35, you think, oh, it's explosive. Then you go, oh, no, it was 24-24, and then they scored four touchdowns in the stupid overtime. I, I swear, college football is the stupidest overtime game I've ever seen. You work hard, why isn't there a kickoff or a punt from the 20, you punt it, something 
to set it up, to just give them the ball at the 25 is just stupid. And then they score, and then you score, and then they get the ball again. So the first team scores. If the second team scores, then they get the ball again. So they get it twice in a row. How stupid is that? They're worried about injuries. That's at the, after playing a full game, to give a team two chances in a row is absolutely insane. That, that ball should be kicked off, and you just run sudden death. I mean, what, why does each team need – they can't stop them. Why do they get rewarded? Now you get the ball. Well, let's make it fair. Well, it is fair. If you play defense, just play defense. Stop the team. That's it. But this 25-yard line is just probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Sorry to rant about that. Uh, tempo we got to see about. Uh, let's see. Georgia, I'm not sure if they're in over. Their quarterback didn't do so well. Their defense, not sure. Arkansas, we're waiting on. Arkansas State, explosive team, but the quarterback didn't look so good. Got to give them a few weeks. And that's the trouble with these new quarterbacks. You have to give them a few weeks. Or the kid from Florida State, you don't even have on your radar. How could you? And now he's there. So this is the adjustments that I make that I do very well with. I'm very good at spotting talent. And so once I see the Florida State kid come in, I see the Arkansas State kid doesn't look that good, but he might get better. Or they might switch it three or four weeks in. They're like, this guy's not getting it. We'll put in the new guy, and all of a sudden the new guy lights it up. So that's why I watch the box scores. I'm looking to see which quarterback's doing it, and if he's not, and they switch him. That's where you get screwed the most in this, is all of a sudden, you know, Arkansas State's quarterback's not doing well. It's three, four weeks in. Now they replace him, but nobody knows about it. Boom, the other kid comes in, six touchdown, boom, they're back to an explosive team. But you're screwed because you bet them under, or you bet against them because their quarterback isn't good. And then you got to catch on to the new kid. So you just got to be careful with that. Um, that's about it. I mean, just looking at that, uh, I see a lot of very strong games, a lot of over-unders that are very uh, good this weekend um, and some other good games. Uh, this should be a very good week. This will also be the first week on pros. Uh, I did have one guy buy the pro and college package last week, and I don't do exhibition games, so... Um, I am discounting this week's package when he buys. I'll take the 50 off because it was 150, so minus you know just 100 for the college. So I'll give him the package you know for the 100 and just apply the 50. But uh, yeah, from now on it'll be pros in college, and there'll be the locks. And again, I'm telling you how many units to play. If you're a hundred dollar player. You want to play 10 or $20 units. If I give you a five unit game, that's your 100. The locks were played at seven units, and so you'd have bet 140. And that's the idea, to bet more. And then the locks, you could have played Ohio State in two or three teasers. Uh, you could have played uh, Nebraska after Tennessee lost with Ohio State in a teaser, or with Alabama, or with Boise, or Michigan. So. Definitely, I do a lot of that where I will play a team in two or three teasers. Uh, I think sometimes I do it on here and it confuses people. And they don't, they, they, I, I'm at such a high level, they can't follow me. They don't understand. If I like two games and I lock them, and the first part of the lock loses, I play the lock because I still love the lock, and I play it in another game and another lock. Uh, so just understand that that's the, that's the thing with the teaser if the first game loses you still love the second game you just play the second game and another teaser and that's kind of what you do um, so it, it's uh, there's a lot into it you vary your bets you, you vary your amounts and if you lose the first game you bet and you love the second game you bet it sometimes you just leave it alone if it's a, a regular if it's a five unit and I lose the first one I don't monkey around with the second one but if it's a lock like Nebraska, I knew was going to go, then, you know, you're playing with Ohio State, let's say, or playing with Alabama or one of the other teams that I gave you, and uh, then you go from there. All right, well, I'll have videos out uh, on the, the couple of college, uh, you know, the overs and the games, probably Thursday or Friday. 
and then the pros I'll have a video out on them uh, the pros are going to be very difficult the first two weeks uh, they don't play anybody in the preseason anymore and by, what I mean by that is they don't play their players so all of a sudden the first game the players aren't used to it they haven't been hit they don't have stamina and the first week or two are terrible games to pick to be watched the the, the quality is not there and a lot of injuries happen because they're not playing. They should never rest these guys on the fourth week. I think that's just insane. Uh, that's when you should play these guys a half and get them into condition to play. This is football. People get hurt. So what? What are you going to do? Not, not leave the house? Just stay in the house. Stay in your bedroom. Don't leave until the first week. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's insane. It's just absolutely stupid. Yeah, I, I mean, I know Teddy Bridgewater got hurt. So what? He, he could have got hurt in the first play of the first week. I mean, it doesn't matter. you got to play and practice and get better. You can't – got to play, though. You can't – it's like golf. You can't – you can go to the putting green, but eventually you got to get on the course. And you just got to do it. So these guys got to play. So it's going to be sloppy. So week one will be sloppy. Um, but, you know, I've seen some, some, some good plays, not some great ones, uh, and a lot of vanilla teams. Uh, so I got to break all those down, but anyway, I think um, pros. I'll, I'll have four to six games, but they won't. I don't think I have a lock in the pros. I might have one, but not as strong. College looks much stronger this week uh, now that I have these teams kind of measured a little bit better. All right, everybody. Well, good luck. And this is Howard the Teaser King. Go to my site www.teaserking.com and. Uh, Try to understand teasers. It's a very unique bet. It's a very good bet. That's why the odds are 13 to 10. If it was a sucker bet, the odds would be even money, or eight, or 10 to 8, or you know they'd be giving you money. But um, you know, you go to MGM in Vegas, it's 13 to 10. If these were such sucker bets, they would they'd be 10 to 10, not 13 to 10. So keep that in mind. They're not sucker bets. You just need to know how to play them. You play a little three or four team teasers, uh, and you vary your bet because you you know I can't go 100%. So if I go three and one, I'm going to break even on the teaser. That's why I play one team in multiple teasers and for different amounts. You hit those solid games, and you make more money on that. I could go less than 50% and make money as long as I hit my locks and bet more on the game, and then these other little games I lose. So I could look, go 0 for 4 on my 4 unit games, but hit my lock for 3 times the amount of money in 2 or 3 teasers, and I win hitting 4, four games and losing 4. I can go 4 and 4 and make, make a ton of money because my locks win. So just keep that in mind. All right, everybody, questions, comments, just please leave them. Go to the site, leave my email, or go here and just leave me a comment. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and I'm here to help educate and help make people money. Thank you very much.